Close. Well, it's now one o'clock. Um, Madam Secretary, are you ready to go? I am, thank you. Excellent, could you do the roll call please? Thank you. Vice Mayor Alvarez. Councilmember Sawyer. Here. Councilmember McDonald. Here. Chair Galvin. Here. Vice Chair Arnone. Here. Board Member Benford. Let the record show that all a BPU City Council Liaison Committee members are present with the exception of Vice Mayor Alvarez and Board Member Badenfort. Excellent. Thank you very much. I do want to remind the committee members to keep their phones or their microphones muted um, when you are not speaking. Thank you very much. And um, we're now taking public comment. No, actually, no, sorry. Um, let's see. I think I have a, no, we do public. Um, Madam Secretary, I'm, I'm showing a public comment on item number two, but we haven't had it introduced as yet. Item two is for public comments on non-agenda matters. Oh, that's right. Thank you. My omission, it's been a while since I hosted. Um, uh, so if you may, wish to make a comment on via Zoom, please raise your hand. Uh, if you are dialing via phone, please dial nine to raise your hand. Um, uh, Madam Secretary, do we have any public comment? We do not, uh, Council Member. All right, thank you very much. Um, and any, um, any, any, any other comments to read or play um, for, for public comment on this on the Zoom? No, we received no written public comment or voice message recorded public comment. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, Director Burke, are you ready to give us an introduction on item 3.1? Yes, I am. Thank you, Council Member Sawyer and members of the liaison subcommittee. Item 3.1 is our only business for today, and this will be an update on the proposed wheeling of recycled water in the Geysers Recycled Water Delivery Pipeline. And Peter Martin, our Deputy Director of Water Resources, will be making the presentation. We also have representatives from both uh, Town of Windsor and Jackson Family Wines, who are also parties potentially to this agreement um, at the meeting, as well as other staff that can help answer questions that the committee may have. And now I'm going to turn it over to Peter. Uh, yeah, thanks for that introduction, Director Burke. Um, good afternoon. Uh, members of the council and BPU that are part of this subcommittee. Um, I'm gonna share my screen if you can, just give me a moment here. Okay, looks like everyone should be able to see my screen at this point. Um, yeah, so this is a, a follow-up today uh, to a um, presentation that I last uh, gave to this uh, committee back in late April. Um, at the time, uh, the direction of this uh, committee was to go forward and look at options and um, potential, um, you know, configuration for a proposed wheeling agreement for wheeling uh, Town of Windsor's recycled water uh, in the Geysers Project Pipeline. Uh, for a irrigation of a agricultural project in Windsor's uh, service area. So um, I'll just start since it's been a while, uh, just giving a quick uh, rundown of the project um, and some of the key components of the Geysers operations today. Uh, overall, uh, more than a billion gallons of water is sent to the Geysers annually by the city of Santa Rosa um, from the Laguna treatment plant. Um, and uh, the contract obviously has performance requirements um, for Santa Rosa, there's a there's a minimum delivery that's required every year uh, under that contract uh, with the Geysers project. Um, there are monetary and pumping costs uh, contributions by Calpine. They also were a large contributor to the construction of the project. Um, in total, about two thirds of the total recycled water supply is sent to the Geyser steam field annually. Um, and you know, at, at the time 
uh, back in the early 2000s when they were looking at different options uh, to reduce um, you know, discharges to the uh, Laguna. Um, this ultimately won out and today still is the lowest cost and weather independent water reuse option for Santa Rosa and the regional partners, um, ultimately saving um, significant amount of money uh, in the partners and which goes back obviously to our customers on their bills as well. Um, the operations for the geysers pipeline, uh, there's a pump station at Lana Road just outside of Laguna treatment plant um, that conveys water uh, about 30 miles to uh, a buried tank at Bear Canyon in the Myakimus Mountains. Um, there are three pump stations that pump in series uh, to get and the water over those mountains uh, to that terminal tank at Calpine Steamfields. So, um, you know, obviously that pump station at Lana Road is, is a very large pump station uh, that pushes the water the majority of the way, but it does get a little assist uh, to get up over the mountains there. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Town of Windsor does have an existing, um, uh, excuse me, I should go back. Um, this is sort of a, a display of the, the total, um, you know, length of the uh, Geyser's pipeline. Um, there is an existing turnout at a proposed point of connection uh, on East Side Road. Uh, where um, a 90-acre parcel is supposed to be irrigated for uh, viticulture. Um, and it is, uh, you know, um, just right along the alignment and within Windsor's uh, existing recycled water service area. Um, here's, again, just sort of a, a closer view of that pipeline um, and the existing turnout that is near that, that proposed uh, facility, that site on East Side Road. Um, Windsor does have a point where they can inc include their recycled water in the pipeline, and they have a contract for a minimum of 193 million gallons per year uh, that they also send to the geysers um, via this pipeline. So um, this is a little bit separate from that, but um, they also convey recycled water, much like Santa Rosa, to several um, irrigation customers uh, within their system as well. Um, this is uh, just sort of a picture of Windsor's reclamation system and facility. Uh, the site at Windsor River Road and Eastside Road is very far uh, from uh, where this existing system is. So in order for them to be able to, uh, you know, perhaps connect to that system would have been a substantial project and probably not cost feasible. So um, what ultimately came out of early discussions was to look for an opportunity uh, to wheel water um, through uh, the city of Santa Rosa's geysers pipeline uh, to which happens to run right alongside of where the property to be served is with additional turnout um, that was constructed when the original pipeline was constructed. So just in terms of a, a general update, um, as subsequent to the direction from this committee, uh, staff did meet with the town of Windsor and uh, ultimately identified several key terms and conditions of a future proposed agreement. So, so we, we've met a couple of times, um, come together um, and, and sort of laid out the, the, the configuration and some of the terms, which I'll talk a little bit about today. And then ultimately, we, we also met with uh, Jackson Family Wines to discuss some of the technical specification, specifications of a potential uh, tie-in at that turnout. Uh, to serve the property that they're interested in receiving recycled water at. So some of the questions that um, came from that last meeting, uh, you know, I, we weren't able to, to totally cover all of them, but I, I just want to recap some of those, those major uh, questions that came out of this committee uh, at that meeting was, you know, mainly, you know, how much excess capacity does the pipeline have right now? Uh, there was a, uh, a great question is to, to what is the benefit to Santa Rosa? Um, and then, you know, ultimately there were questions about what are the risks and, and, and how, how can we mitigate any of those risks? So, so I'll cover these three uh, particular questions today in my presentation. So with the first question, um, how much excess capacity exists in the pipeline? Um, the design pumping capacity is, is a little more than 35 million gallons per day. 
uh, for the pipeline. Um, average daily flow to the geysers is about 11 to 12 million gallons per day. Uh, there's a max historical flow of about 18 and a half million gallons per day. And then just additionally, I wanted to point out that the permitted capacity for Windsor's facility and their uh, entry point into the uh, geysers pipeline is one point. So the facility itself it can produce about 1.9 million gallons per day. And the capacity of that pump station is about one and a half million gallons per day. So in total, you know, it's it's safe to say conservatively, there's about 15 to 20 million gallons per day of excess capacity in that pipeline. Um, as many folks likely know, uh, when that project was constructed and permitted, uh, there was anticipation for quite a bit more uh, flows and treatment at the Laguna treatment plant. However, uh, we've done such a great job with conserving water um, and also, you know, we've dealt with droughts and other things which you're well aware of, um, have reduced the, the flows uh, well below what was anticipated back in that time frame. So um, there is additional capacity in this, this pipeline right now. And then the, the, the great question came up, you know, really, what, what is the benefit to Santa Rosa? Um, you know, I think uh, to my previous slide, you know, using the existing infrastructure capacity, it's already built. Um, you know, we know that we currently have unused capacity in the pipeline, and there's an opportunity for making full utilization of that, that pipeline and some cost recovery for utilizing that capacity. Um, and then furthermore, um, turnouts were constructed, anticipation of future delivery of recycled water in the region. This is uh, just one of six turnouts uh, that was constructed um, with the anticipation that there would be additional recycled water being able to be delivered through this pipeline in the future. And then, um, Another benefit, of course, is um, this project uh, with the Jackson Family Wines uh, is currently using surface water supplies from the Russian River. This is a great opportunity to utilize uh, Windsor's recycled water to reduce reliance on those surface water supplies and potentially make more water available uh, for the region. And then, of course, uh, just the partnerships and regional supply benefits this is an opportunity to prove this concept up and potential future water supply options for our region. So uh, again, you know, utilizing and maximizing the full capacity and benefit of this existing infrastructure. And then uh, finally, just, you know, really what are the risks and how will they be mitigated? You know, we know um, we don't want to impact existing operations and contractual obligations that we already have uh, with Calpine and the Geysers project. So, um, and then, you know, furthermore, this is a high pressure pipeline. Uh, there was a turnout constructed with an existing ball valve. That valve uh, has not been exercised uh, in more than 20 years. Um, so, you know, just it's, it's very, very careful about how we construct uh, that tie in um, and, and making sure that we're we're doing everything we can to protect uh, that existing infrastructure and asset. Uh, of course, you know, just uh, making sure that all costs are recovered um, and that um, any uh, impacts from this project are not on the ratepayers uh, or the the regional partners that um, you know participate in this this project. And of course, you know, ensuring that all legal, environmental, and regulatory uh, you know concerns are addressed. Uh, will be important. So uh, in my next uh, several slides, I'll talk a little bit about some of the terms and conditions that we've discussed um, that we believe fully will mitigate uh, many of these existing risks and concerns uh, in the future. So in terms of um, the configuration of a proposed uh, agreement, uh, you know, recycled water is to be provided solely by the town of Windsor. As uh, most folks are aware here, um, we have several customers uh, in Santa Rosa that um, you know would like to receive recycled water, but um, have been told there is no water available. Um, so there, there is folks that are on standby. So there really is no recycled water to be um, added into the pipeline uh, through what's produced at the Laguna treatment plant. So it has to be provided and we have to have assurances that we'll be utilizing only Windsor's recycled water. Um, and then, you know, essentially the goal is to have a wheeling agreement for utilizing 
uh, the excess capacity uh, between the Santa Rosa and the town of Windsor. So really the agreement um, is sort of limited to Windsor's use of that pipeline uh, for the purposes of serving their customer in their recycled water service area. And then of course, much like any of the other recycled water customers, town of Windsor will have uh, an agreement with Jackson Family Wines for sale and delivery of recycled water, um, you know, similar to many of the customers that the, their existing customers that they have. It's just a matter of how it gets there. Um, you know, again, some of the terms and conditions we've discussed is that, you know, there is this 2008 agreement um, for conveying town of Windsor's water to the geysers. Um, the goal would be to have a separate agreement and making sure that it's uh, subordinate to any of these additional agreements. So any, and then of course, you know, any water that's conveyed in this agreement is interruptible uh, and subordinate to the operational needs of Santa Rosa and the town of Windsor uh, in their ability to get their water supplies that are contractually obligated to the geysers project. So priority goes to those. And then of course, um, making sure that there's a solid operations plan um, for deliveries and that it's approved by Santa Rosa to ensure um, the accounting and the, pri the priority is preserved uh, for those contracts. So um, furthermore, uh, in terms of, you know, addressing some of the concerns about tying into this uh, infrastructure, um, the goal would be to have Santa Rosa have design approval and construction oversight uh, for connection to that geysers pipeline. Um, Santa Rosa would be compensated for all costs related to pre-construction, design review, um, and construction oversight, um, including, and in the future, any operational or administrative costs. And then uh, Windsor, uh, you know, would be responsible for any and all permits, uh, licenses, and easements and right of way. Uh, they could, of course, pass some of those on to their their customer, um, at the project proponent. And um, furthermore, just uh, Windsor is responsible for the operations and maintenance of anything beyond that turnout and the city of Santa Rosa's infrastructure. And then. Uh, and the term would be a 10-year term. Um, the town of Windsor would be the lead agency uh, under the CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act, and Santa Rosa would be a responsible agency. Um, you know, of course, we'd want to make sure there's the standard indemnities and defense, uh, you know, you know, dual defense um, and protections for Santa Rosa and Santa Rosa water. And then just making sure that all the risks are passed to the appropriate responsible parties um, they're going to make this project work. Um, with that, I'll just stop sharing my screen, and I'm happy to, you know, take some initial questions and feedback uh, from the committee. Thank you, Mr. Martin. I just have one basic question before I move to the committee. Um, you looks like you have the mitigations and the legal consequences or ramifications pretty well buttoned up. Um, regardless of that, are there, do you see any potential yellow or red flags? Um, as we move forward with this contract? I, I don't, um, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that the terms are, uh, you know, accepted by all the different parties. I think the next step, uh, of course, is to get the attorneys um, involved. If, if you know, of course, um, bar, you know, barring some direction from this committee um, and start to hammer out some of the, the details. But I, I think that, you know, in general, there is a will and a want by all the project proponents, and it really seems to make sense. So, thank you for that. I, I appreciate that. Uh, questions from the committee at this point? Questions or comments? Um, Councilmember McDonald. So, I I have a couple technical questions, and I think these are some of the ones that we um, posed last time, but. Um, Will Windsor be adding into the water pipeline once they tap into it? Are they planning on adding additional water that will be shipped to the geysers or not? So, um, you know, I, there is a there is a contract uh, right now um, that uh, has some some limitations um, in that 2008 agreement. Um, I think 193 million gallons is the minimum. Um, Windsor. It, you know, has the, the right to build into that and continue to add on more water. Um, you know, much like Santa Rosa, 
um, and I, you know, I don't want to speak too much to Windsor's operations, but their goal is never to discharge. So, um, you know, they would make up the balance of whatever they need for their operations. Um, obviously, the geysers pipeline, you can put water in during the winter time, which is advantageous. Um, and so, yes, uh, I think their goal is to ultimately continue to increase the amounts of water um, under that that existing agreement in 2008. And then, of course, you know, whatever water is necessary uh, to serve this customer, it's about 90, 90 acres of vineyard. Um, so so that there would be increased amounts. And uh, Director Burke can can add more. She's she's obviously much more familiar with that agreement as well. If there's anything I missed. Um, I think uh, Council Member McDonald, uh, your question. So right now we have a, a contract with Windsor. Um, we're at the amount that they're contributing. If they ever want to up that amount, we have contractual guidelines for them to do so. But what they're looking at with what we're proposing here is really providing water to supply a specific customer uh, for their needs. So it wouldn't be adding anything to the geysers at this time. Okay. So my concern on that is that if Windsor's not going to be adding more water, and I don't mean this in any dis disrespectful way, but our own ag doesn't have enough water for our customers. So it would seem to me that it would behoove us to say, if Windsor wants to tap in to serve one of their customers, they should then amend their contract to add more of the water so that our own ag is able to then have more water um, given to them from city of Santa Rosa. I, I'm fine with them tapping into the pipe. What I have the issue with is you can't tap into the pipe and then just give it to one of your clients. You should be contributing to our contract for city of Santa Rosa so that our own clients can then benefit as well. And if they have extra, that's even better. We should go back and renegotiate the contract to reduce what we're sending to the geysers um, from this 30 year contract, because now we have another source to be able to do that. And then in fact, everyone could win. So it, it's a it's a great point. I, let me um, add some clarification. So Windsor is currently providing water to the geysers and they are helping offset. It's, it's such a small amount in comparison to what Santa Rosa sends. And so the way we operate our system is uh, we operate it such that we free up as much water as possible for our ag customers. Uh, we do work very cooperatively with Windsor so that when they have excess water, if we can have them provide that water earlier in the year, we'll provide that to the geysers to hold more back in storage to provide more to our ag customers. But this amount that they're looking at here is, is water that is wouldn't make a difference quite frankly, it's such a small amount and it's serving that one particular customer. Um, so there were discussions uh, and um, Jackson Family Wines did reach out. We did make that very clear that we had concerns and they had to make this okay with their existing, our existing customers. And the feedback that we received was that they did reach out and the Farm Bureau is supportive of this as well as customers, because um, that was a concern that we did have. Okay, because I have, I have not heard that. And so my, my concern goes back to the fact that um, someone's tapping into our line. They're helping out a client, which I'm really happy that we can figure out how to do this. What my, my biggest thing is, can we get more people contributing so that all of Sonoma County ag industry can benefit from this? So I'm going to keep pushing back on that until I get the answer that I really would prefer to hear, which is we're able to give them more water and and then therefore give more water to our own agriculture. So um, I might just be that one girl that's gonna keep on, um, you know, tagging on to that particular one. The other question I had was, um, does the 10 to 12 million gallons per day meet our contractual um, requirements? And then if Windsor does tap in, does it actually add to that or you're telling me that it, it isn't going to be significant enough that we can actually reduce what's going up there. So, so our contract, um, we have a certain amount that we have to deliver every year. It's an annual amount. We fluctuate million gallons per day and Windsor's contract that supports that we existing, 
the existing contract we have, they're already tied into the geyser system. Mm -hmm. And so that water, anything that is um, sent to the geysers helps us meet our contractual obligations and then allows us to have more water in storage. So they are absolutely helping us meet that obligation on an annual basis and providing more water supply, uh, recycled water supply for our existing customers. That is definitely a benefit. Um, this is this is a very, it's similar, but extremely different in that all we're looking to do is move some excess water that Windsor has not always available, similar to us. So when we have it, we provide it to our customers. When we don't, it's not available. That's the same thing that Windsor's looking to do here. Okay, and then the last question I have is on the 10 year term, is that the end of the length of our contract with the geysers? Is that why you went to 10 years? Um, that was just, uh, you know, kind of a initial proposal. The concern was obviously that the, the contract extends to, I believe, 2037. Um, and uh, we wanted to be free and clear of any, uh, you know, potentially any conflicts with that time frame. Um, so we just proposed an initial 10 year time frame. Um, obviously that gives us time to prove up the project too. Yeah, I, I think that's the only thing is, you know, these long-term projects on water that we're unaware of unless Santa Rosa is getting some type of benefit from it. I hate to be um, in contract for a long period of time when we don't really know what what's going to happen. It feels a little bit like a pilot, but I'm not sure what the you know, everybody else has to say about that. I also like things to be long enough so that we have a data and some reference points along the way, but it, that feels a little bit long to me simply because I feel like the geysers contract in general is, was done at too long, right? So um, yeah, I would wanna know what terms would come back and if there's any room for renegotiation, if in fact, we did need them to contribute more water, we were having to reduce more and we saw something as a result of them tapping into the system. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, I think you're right. I, we don't know what the future of beyond the 2037 date, obviously that was a contract that was written, you know, to give time to pay back, um, you know, some of the significant capital costs for that um, project, um, you know, and, and so um, there is contributions from Calpine for that too, as well. They're, they're paying for the water, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, the 10 year term was just a, a number, um, you know, that's kind of what we were pursuing, but it's obviously subject to, um, you know, whatever the desires of the elected officials are and appointed officials, so. So, so just for a, a little bit additional detail, if that's okay, um, we recognize that this is a large capital investment that would need to be made um, by the customer and by Windsor. And so we do not want one of the very clear things was, you know, the geyser's contract is through 2037. We have no uh, desire for that end date to be close to that. So we were looking for a term that would still be uh, acceptable for making the type of capital investment that they're looking to make, which is going to be significant, um, but not put us in any way close to the, um, the uh, term date, the end date of our current geyser's contract. Um, so this is, this would put us um, about, uh, this would put us five years ahead of when the geyser contract would terminate. And so that gives us time to see, um, you know, where, where, don't want to get off agenda, but we are looking at already what we're going to do in the future with the geysers contract. We're about 15 years ahead. This is the time to start looking. What does it mean? What does the future look like? So this gives us uh, a period to allow for this to happen, if that's so the direction of the uh, liaison subcommittee, and then also give us time to, um, you know, continue to explore options and have an end date that is prior to the geysers contract. So we know kind of where we're going to be going with our future water supply. So I hope that helps. It does. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate Windsor being on as well. And, and um, you know, I really hope that no one takes my comments as uh, pushing back significantly, but I do have a lot of concerns around our own ag and that, you know, this this is an opportunity, I think, to help us all win a little bit, and that would I prefer to see that. Thank you, Council Member. And your cautions are 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 definitely reasonable. And before I move to 
um, Chair Galvin, um, Ms. Burke or Director Burke or Mr. Warren, could could you reiterate? I think it's in your presentation actually. The subordinations that that move to protect um, kind of a, their off ramps, if you will. Could you reiterate those th that subordination um, element and and what, how that creates an off ramp for us in the for potentially in the future? Yeah, um, you know, obviously priority goes to meeting our contractual obligations. The same goes for Windsor. Um, they're going to want to protect themselves. So, um, you know, any interruptions unforeseen or otherwise to the pipeline um, or, you know, other issues that may prop up, um, the, this, this is subject to, you know, being subordinate to meeting those contractual obligations and uh, potential interruption um, to, so, so there, there's, it will have to be built that way. Um, because, you know, obviously um, the contractual obligations have some some clawbacks and some penalties if we don't make those uh, those uh, deliveries to the geysers. So thank you very much. Chair Galvin. Thank you. Hey, Peter, I just had a question um, anticipating what you think the regulatory requirements are going to be. For example, is this subject to CEQA or is uh, what are we looking at as far as having to meet any regulatory uh, issues? Um, so when the, um, the project was built, um, there was a substantial um, EIR with, with multiple addendums. Um, so I, we, we think that in general, the project as it is today uh, does have um, CEQA coverage to, to continue just to expand, um, you know, deliveries into the pipeline. Um, what occurs on the beyond the turnout um, probably still needs to be figured out. Um, we're proposing that Santa Rosa would not be the lead agency um, for that reason, just because it's it's really outside of our sphere of influence, our service area, and really the operations to the Geysers pipeline isn't changing significantly. Um, I should should pre-qualify that I'm, that I'm not a CEQA attorney or, you know, a specialist, uh, but, but uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I, I think that in general, because, um, you know, it's recycled water and we do know that the regional board is kind of already given a preliminary thumbs up to this project, um, just in some preliminary discussions, um, uh, you know, I, I think CEQA should be relatively easy, but, uh, you know, obviously anytime you're disturbing any earth constructing anything someone has to do analysis there to make sure that everything's covered thank you um mr arnoni thank you john my question has to do with timing and i, I believe our first meeting on this was back in april and we're now almost october and my recollection was that there was some request at least for some I don't know, not urgency, but some timeliness of, of acting on this. So I guess my question is, how, what, what do you envision as the timeline on this project? Um, I think, you know, I think we, we can actually move pretty swiftly uh, now that we've been able to swap terms and conditions. Um, I think once we have that that agreement, that was the, the major component of getting just the agreement between the town of Windsor and the city of Santa Rosa getting us in the same room. So I, I would anticipate, I think, I think um, since it's so high profile, um, I've discussed sort of offline with Jennifer, bring it back to the BPU and then potentially back to the council too. Um, you know, I, so I think my, my, my suspicion is that we could see something in terms of a draft agreement in the next few months. Um, I, I, I would hope you know, we can move swiftly. Um, it's just uh, the matter of figuring out the construction piece, I think that's gonna, um, and you know, obviously others are gonna have to figure out, um, you know, just making sure through the specifications um, and potholing, of course, to find the, it's buried right now, the turnout. So, um, you know, th th that would probably be the piece that maybe just uh, needs a little more time, but, um, you know, I, I think we can move swiftly in the next, you know, six months probably. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Okay, so let's move to public comment. Um, 
so we're taking comments on item 3.1. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you're dialing via phone, please dial nine to raise your hand. Um, Madam Secretary, do we have any comments of any type on this item today? Council Member Sawyer, I see no hands being raised via Zoom and we receive no written or voice message public comments. Thank you very much. Then let's move to the final question for me, which is, um, Director Burke, what are you looking for from us today? Yes, uh, thank you, Council Member Sawyer and committee members. So we are looking for, um, a, in essence, uh, some type of either concurrence or feedback on the proposed, again, I wanna make this very clear, these are proposed terms and conditions uh, that staff has, has come to based on the questions and direction we received from the committee last time. And based on that, do you want us to continue to move this forward? And if so, uh, then we would start to work on uh, agreement language uh, related to this based on this concept. And then that would be uh, what we would bring forward likely uh, to BPU. We'd either come back to this committee first or we'd go um, to BPU and to council. I'm envisioning likely a, a study session and then a final um, agreement that would be considered. Uh, so those are the terms that we would need to still work out um, on, on you know, the other end as well. Windsor still is gonna need to work on uh, portions with Jackson Family Wines and ultimately then determine how we're gonna move this forward in terms of construction. So I do think this would be, you know, still take quite a bit of time, but right now we're looking for the terms and conditions that we've outlined. Do they in essence address uh, some of the concerns that you brought up at the last committee? Are you uh, supportive of what we've put forward? And do you want us to continue to move down this path based on the proposed terms and conditions that we outlined? Thank you for that. So in essence, this is a, a, a bit of a preliminary um, a nod potentially from this body to move forward. And then if something comes up, if, as things change, um, we, we it may or may not come before this body. It could go directly to the BPU. Um, and I'm happy to bring it back to this body first, if you guys would like to see it again as a sort of a draft. And then we could go uh, to BPU and to council. Um, so it's it's whatever the co the committee's uh, preference would be. Well, given some of the the concerns that um, Councilmember McDonald um, brought up, I would want to. I think it, it perhaps it would be important to bring it back for uh, to touch bases uh, on this this committee um, before moving to the BPU. And if there are, we're st still concerned from Councilmember McDonald, then uh, it would be an opportunity for her to voice those um, and perhaps create a little more comfort in moving forward today with a preliminary nod uh, in, in moving forward with the negotiations and the contract. Councilmember McDonald, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I was going to say if it comes to council and some of those concerns that I was, you know, pretty set on early on are, are still there, you know, I'm just going to bring it up there. So I prefer to try and hash some of this out. It defeats the purpose of a committee if we can't hash some of this out before it goes to uh, council directly. So um, that'd be my preference is if we could see a dra draft and certainly a one hour um, meeting should be sufficient again. Uh, you know, hopefully we don't have to take up too much time for everyone, but uh, I would say those would be my directions is that we need to be able to see what we could do um, for city of Santa Rosa with no disrespect to, to what Windsor currently contributes to the water pipeline. However, um, I think it would go a long way if we are able to come to some terms and agreements on additional contributions so that our own ag potentially could could win in those moments where we we also could have a little bit more water. So sure. well, I know staff will be aware of those concerns. And and I was the one who said a number of months ago, what's in it for us? So I can I can relate to your concerns uh, and your cautions. Um, I think the the entire committee is sensitive to that. And um, with that, uh, barring the need for a, a motion, if the committee is uh, in agreement with having it come back to this come back to this body before moving to the BPU, um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think you have your direction, Count, uh, Director Burke. Is that am I am I reading my committee correctly? 
<laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Director Burke. Any other questions? Any other needs for you today? Thank you, Mr. Arnone. My, my only comment would be that if, if we do come back, and I think that's a good idea, that perhaps might alleviate the need for study sessions before both the BPU and the, and the City Council. So if, if we can turn two meetings into one meeting, I think that's a great idea. Good point. Thank you. We will we will take that feedback and figure out the most expeditious way to bring this forward uh, before both bodies. Okay. Excellent. Well, my thanks to the committee and thanks to staff. An excellent job. It's a, it's a, it is the first time that we've had this re this kind of request. So, um, but the, not the first time you've dealt with contracts. I know you have a plethora of those out there uh, with our own ag uh, partners. Um, so, I, if there are no other uh, questions or comments, I believe I can bring this this committee meeting uh, to a close. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.